What's up? What's up, people? We are back. Episode two of the Patrick Gale Show right here. Boston Radio Network, Believe Sports and BS3 Sports. We got it going on with Coach Gale today. We're talking about his assistant coach today, Coach White. Adrian White with us today. And also we discuss giving to the Albany State Rams. We are your source for the man himself. The, this is the source himself, Coach Gale. You can't get nobody else, no insiders. You can get from the man himself. He is here, the one only Coach Patrick Gale on the here with us. Coach, good to talk to you, brother. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How are you? Coach, I'm great. We made it to week two. They ain't those off the air, so we're doing something right. <laughs> I, 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 I. And and the great thing about it is we had a, a big win in the conference. Um, uh, Clark, uh, Atlanta, uh, my guy, uh, Coach Jordan, um, his, he, he got, a, got a big win last night. So big up to this IAC. No doubt, no doubt. It's IAC doing big things already early in the year. Now, Coach Gale, we want to talk about your assistant coach here, Coach Adrian White, who you brought back home to Albany, Georgia, and Albany State, uh, who we fellowship with that brother. So tell us about Coach White a little bit. We'll talk about himself as well. But uh, what 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 about this young brother here that when he did you want to bring him back again to be part of this program as you uh, build this thing out the right way here at Albany State? I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I like what you said. You, we brought him back home. We brought him back home. Um, Coach Coach White, you know, was with us um, in our championship, our East Division championship year. Um, he he's done a lot for me at my last uh, institution. Um, when he was available to come to Albany State, my second year at Albany State, I brought him in. And we happened to win the East and get to the championship game. And just about eight or nine minutes away from winning it all, in 2020, um, he he went and pursued you know some you know personal endeavors for his career, and I like to tell people that he was my first recruit um, this year. Um, he was available to come back when we had an opening, and he he I was able to convince him to come back, and he's been awesome ever since. We have a lot of freshmen, so he's been doing a great job in um, skill development, not just skill development, personal development for the freshmen, but the returning guys see, you know, what he does. He's very good at, you know, building your skill set, building your confidence, building, you know, your tools needed to perform at the highest level. He's also very good, you know, at offense. And, you know, he's my offensive coordinator. He's my offensive guy. So as uh, big things is going to happen this season just by his presence. No doubt. And, and Coach White, let me ask you this, man, uh, to tell me about your your your, your journey, man, in basketball. Like, at what point in your life you decide you want to get into coaching and really help it for these young men, man? Uh, well, first of all, boss man, good morning. Uh, Coach Gale, obviously, good morning. I uh, appreciate you all having me on. Um, man, getting into coaching, that was not a, um, a thing that I looked at or I saw myself getting into, um, especially as a player. Um, my, uh, my head coach, um, when I was at Florida Memorial University, um, coach Bellinger, he always told me you end up being a coach one day. And I always kept looking at him like, get out of here. And, you know, um, I just got to the end of, you know, my, my, uh, pursuit of, you know, trying to do something after college, as far as basketball was concerned. And, you know, I reached out to, you know, my whole old head coach, we reached out to coach Gale and, you know, we had our conversation and it went from that conversation to being right on the floor. And it kind of felt, you know, natural once I got on the floor and, and was able to communicate because it was basketball at the end of the day. I knew how to communicate basketball from my time of being a point guard and being a leader. And, you know, I really, truly, you know, loved it and enjoyed it because it's still competition as far as, you know, your jumping from playing now to basically, you know, guiding and leading and mentoring and hopefully shaping them into playing how you would want them to play if you were on the floor. So it's just been one of those things of seeing that translate. It's been a, you know, it's been a good um, situation for me. And Coach White, um, being a point guard, as you said, kind of coach on the floor anyway. So how does mm -hmm. that help? We're trying to help young men develop their games because you was a point guard. You, you, you was calling the plays, calling the sets out, and calling the actions out. So knowing that that's, that was your role, how does that translate up in young men in their games, whether it be in the post or on the wings, or get them to play the right way, knowing what you know as, as a player. Right. So um, 
and 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 the and the SIAC is pretty much you know HBCU life. A lot of HBCU HBCU schools. I'm sorry, and I you know coming from HBCU school basically lived that life. I was the guy on the team. You know, I had the 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 outside stuff and also had the inside stuff. But my main focus, especially when I played, was making sure I was ready and prepared. And um, a lot of you know a lot of the guys this year was just getting them locked in on being prepared every single day whether it's um, skill set stuff or whether it's watching film and just making them understand and see what we see. If we can get the guys to see what we see, we feel like, you know, we'll be in a good position because they have, you know, they have a good mindset, they have a good heart about this thing. We just need them to see what we see. No doubt. I think that's the biggest development for young men. And, you know, I'm a son of a coach. So for me, watching the film comes natural to me. But getting a young man really to understand when, when you watch film, you, you need to watch yourself. Not everybody, but watch what you do with it. Watch really what your your role is in our in our action or our privileges. What are you doing? Where are we supposed to be at? On the nail? We should be hard heads with well, showing just show, show and drop. So all those things, having the have have it pretty back to you off the film, not just doing practice in a, in a drill, kind of like a robot, but really knowing what they're doing when they see you without having to be like, Oh, thinking, overthinking it. So talk about that part of it, getting a young man, really, their IQ to grow for basketball. Um, well, with um, with film with us um, and with film with anybody, sometimes it's hard for a young man and even grown adults, you know, to take accountability. And when you're watching film, sometimes it's like, man, I didn't bring it today. I didn't have that effort today or, man, I wasn't in that spot where I needed to be and I know I'm going to get ripped. So let me kind of sneak away and not watch the film. We want them to understand that, you know, our our accountability when we talk to them isn't coming from a place of hatred or, you know, coming from a place of, you know, we're trying to stunt your growth. We want you to see it. But then also there's times where we want to tell them, hey, you saw this happening and you were going to make that play, but you didn't trust yourself enough. Like trust yourself to make that play you're gonna you're good enough you see it make that play you're almost there and like just you know and it's it's also accountability but it's also an encouraging thing too you want to you want to show them that hey you're not as far off as you think like yeah we're getting on you but if you're looking at yourself right now you're this close to figuring it out just keep plugging away and you'll be fine no doubt coach white i think that's the thing about it you all coming at it from a, a point to grow from not a point of demeaning i feel like some coaches you, we know who they are who attack the players and demean the players and coach gill's demeanor and your, your demeanor is right, right demeanor for me because i feel like you, you're you not jay james they, they speak my man you don't know it all either so i like, you know everything you know what i'm saying hey show me where i'm wrong help me be better because our business would be accountable but i also feel like it's just the approach how it's said, it's how it's communicated. I feel like you're Coach Gale for being around you, both both your brothers, that you all have a way of communication that a young man can can kind of get with because it's not from a place of evil or an, an attack or to demean a young man and, and right. break the spirit. Right, right. And I appreciate that because, you know, at the end of the day, they already have their own stuff going on. They got so many things going on with life and dealing with school and the pressures of everything else. The last thing they need is to be in an environment with coaches where they feel that, you know, that hatred or I don't want to be around my coach, like, you know, or even my assistant. Because sometimes, yeah, like you said, the head coach can be a guy where, you know, he may have that demeanor where, okay, I don't want to be around him for too long. But at least the assistant coach should be that guy we should be able to, you know, talk to and have that real mentorship and that leadership coming from him. He's got to be that ground floor guy to not only, you know, establish and, you know, maintain what we're doing culturally, but also be that guy that, you know, I that as a player that I can kind of talk to and relate to. Not more so, you know, air my grievances, but more so say, man, coach, like I'm really having a hard time with this. Like, what can I do? Let me, let's do this. Let's do extra. Let's get in the gym. Let's do these things to kind of prepare myself and be a better player. And if an assistant coach isn't doing that, then, you know, it, it really is a detriment to the program. And Coach White, talk about working for a guy like Coach Gale who empowers you. You, you know, like mm -hmm. he just heavy-handed on you, delegates to you, let, let's do your thing. But talk about that, man, working for a guy who believes in you, let's, yeah, let's give, you, give you some room to actually do your thing and not smother, smother you, be like, yeah, everything you do, he has to check it off with you. Right. Um, and it's empowering, Um, but also at the same time, it keeps you on your P's and Q's because even though he isn't, you know, on top of you and kind of over your shoulder watching, you know, when we have our, our, our meetings and we talk, you have to be prepared. 
You can't just go in and say, oh, coach, I want to go with this lineup. Let's just see if it works. Like, nah, we're not in that business of let's just see if it works. Like, we want to know, hey, coach, last minutes, who can we, what 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 group can we go with or what um, what plays can we run? Have you watched this team? What did you see? So all those things. So, you know, it's not just me, you know, going off and doing my own thing and then just coming through with, you know, just random facts. Like, I have to know what I'm looking at. And, you know, luckily, me and him have been around each other for so long that most times, like, before he even asks me the question, I'm kind of just, you know, blurting it out to him and kind of just talking to him and running stuff by him. And, and, and it has been times where we haven't seen eye to eye with stuff, but at the same time, we're both prepared with our points. And sometimes my point may be correct. Sometimes, most of the time, his point is correct, but it's never, you know, coming in without lack of knowledge. So, I know that he's not looking over my shoulder, but at the same time, he is looking over my shoulder. So I want to make sure that I'm prepared when I do come in and also, you know, be observant of everything that's going on. Because at the end of the day, like, I don't want to be an assistant forever. I do want to have my opportunity to be in a head coach. And, you know, his empowering of me puts me in that position to where, you know, I can find my voice and find who I am and my identity as a coach. And Coach White, for the listeners out here who are learning about you, learning about you today, what is a fun fact you want to know about you as a person and, and what, what about, about your character and what you want to know about you as they watch you and Coach Gill coach this team up this year? Fun fact. Um, man, I think I pretty much set it up. Um, I don't know if it's a fun fact, but it's the only fact that I haven't said anything about. Um, I recently got married um, a year ago. Um, and the recruit that he was talking about wasn't me. It was my wife. <laughs> Definitely had to recruit my wife and get her to buy in and um, come up here. So my, my wife, Rhapsody, is an amazing woman. And, um, you know, she's made this whole thing happen, and I couldn't thank her enough. Um, and then as far as, you know, just getting ready and prepared for the season, um, for those that don't know me, um, they'll see, you know, my passion for the players, but then also my my passion and my love, not only for the players, but also for the university. And, you know, for Coach, um, Coach Gale has given me an opportunity, you know, way back and given a lot of people opportunities that I'm still friends with to this day um, that are still in this coaching business. And, you know, without him, I wouldn't have found my path so early and I wouldn't have been able to, you know, do the things that I've been able to do in this short period of time. So I do owe him a lot. And I feel like with that, with that loyalty, I feel like I have to be my best every single day when I come in here. So that's my that's my position. No doubt, and Coach Gill has done a great job of helping our young brothers in the business. Uh, if we ain't gonna help our own, who else gonna do the same with this show right here? If I, if, if, if nobody's helping Coach Gill, I'm gonna do the show for him because uh, that's what he needs to be put out. He needs to put you all out here, Albany State, and we're doing it for, for doing it just because of me. Because see, Coach Gill does what he does for help you know, you know black people in the business. I'm helping black coaches in the business, so it's all full circle here, helping each other out. We don't help ourselves. Who gonna help? Who gonna help us out? So we gotta do it ourselves. And I'm happy to have you here, Coach White, with Coach Gill, and uh, I'm looking forward to cheering you all on at Clark and Morehouse, and hoping you beat the living brakes off of us. <laughs> just want to compete, Jr. We just want to compete. Just want to compete. Great guys, <laughs> Coach Whitler, Coach Jordan, great guys. We just want to compete. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you, you know what my loyalty lies, though. All for the state, the rest. Well, 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 for all you loyal ASU people out there, ASU f uh, fans, ASU alums, nah, seriously, today, I just wanted to put in, uh, today is our uh, Given Golden Ram Tuesday. Our Dr. Kelly, our AD, has worked really hard on this campaign. So if you want to donate directly to us, um, it's on our Instagram and it's on our, our X account. But to donate directly to us, you just need to text capital G-R-T-1, capital G, all caps, capital G-R-T-1 to 71777, capital G, capital R, capital T-1 to 71777. And that will help us tremendously. Um, what people we need to understand about you know, HBCUs is that we 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 have to rely so much on, you know, donations, especially from alums, especially from people like you that that really reach out and, and, and help us out and care. But the bottom line is scholarships. You know, we we are not, you know, like other schools 
that can have so many scholarships. I tell recruits all the time, scholarships is not like candy that you just give out. Scholarships are are more like, you know, mortgages. When 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 you buy a house and you have that mortgage, it's like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. That's what a scholarship is. So, you know, we we need, you know, help and donations, you know, to a lot that you know, not just for scholarships, but also, you know, for, you know, salaries for our staff. You know, I have one assistant coach, that's Coach White, you know, and, and it's not an easy job, you know, coming to Albany State. Like I said, I had to recruit his wife because I had to convince his wife, you know, to, to invest and believe in him. And and I can't be, you know, grateful enough, just like my wife. You bigged up your wife, Coach White. I got to big up my wife. You know, I love you, Sharita. <laughs> because she has been, you know, uh, such a big support for me as well. But, you know, when you donate to, you know, our program, you donate to people. You know, Coach White and uh, Rhapsody, you know, they have a great story. They actually met through basketball, which is amazing. You know, and, you know, we, we have to help. Like you said, they are our people, our institutions, and anything is huge. You know, uh, the kids have to eat. The kids have to, you know, get certain, you know, support systems financially. Whatever you give helps. So, you know, please consider us and understand that we're, we're working hard and we have personal stories and sacrifices to help, you know, win basketball games. Now, Coach, do you all have a link that you can give to outside of today's giving day in, in general that you can give to the basketball program in general? So we, can we, do. We, do, we do have a link, but the great thing about what I just said was that it goes directly to us. A lot of people say, well, I don't know if, if I'm giving goes directly to your program. Um, if you text capital GRT1 to 71777, that goes directly to us. Sounds good. And we'll make sure we put that out there on X and Instagram as well and the LinkedIn's and also that we can get the link for the men's basketball donations. So we make sure we can get the like coach Gail said, you're donating the people. And having been HBCU, I understand there's certain things that don't get funded, certain things that we have to hold back on. And Coach Gail's school always say it's funded by student fees, okay? And let's be honest, it's not a lot. And let's be honest about this too. I, I'm saying this, not Coach Gale, Coach White. I'm saying it. Say of Georgia, the University System of Georgia, on the funds, the HBCUs in Georgia. I'm gonna say it out loud. We'll have somebody on the show to talk about it down the road here. But I'm I went to Tennessee State. We're underfunded as well. It's been in the news. The federal government said we're still underfunded as well. So I just want you to know, if the HBCUs are underfunded by these states, states in the South, it's being real, and we need we have to take care of our own. We have to come pull together our own resources to help make sure these young men have great schools all over the state. Make sure Coach White and Coach, and Coach Gill are paid properly. They can have to take care of the kids properly and their families properly because what they're doing is kind of the love of basketball, love, love of young men. So it's, it's not get rich here, people. It's about love of people, love of young men, love of helping young men become better fathers, husbands, businessmen, and growing in some be successful. So HBCU did, did it for me, and then I did it for Coach White and Coach Gill doing his thing. Uh, so I understand people. It's about service. Loving it, though these kids and young men helping them go to be successful young black men in society. So it's all about. So it's all about. I actually got a call um, from somebody that actually was was with uh, Coach White and myself uh, in the twenty twenty season as an intern, and then we you know we got him to to play his uh, senior season. But Amari Beecham, he he called me. He told me how he's um, now coaching at his alma mater at Miller Grove High School. And, and he's trying to also get in the business in, in sports and, you know, just call to update me and tell me how how he's doing great things, how he's learned a lot. And that's what it's all about. Like, again, these are people, you know, it's not when you when you see a logo and when you see teams compete, like Coach White said earlier, a lot of these young men have a lot of things going on and all they need is someone to give them a chance. And, you know, we give what we have, you know. We give more than money. We give of ourselves. You know, we sacrifice a lot to help these young men be successful. And a lot of times it's not reflected on a scoreboard. It's reflected in life. So you won't see that immediately. You'll see it years down the line. And to get a call from a young man that played for me, you know, two years ago is, is awesome. And that's what it's all about. No doubt, Coach Gill. And I want to ask you this, Coach Gill and Coach White, talk about the community involvement all over the 
uh, really, really, really getting involved with the community, getting the community behind you all because they should love on you all as well and become like all beliefs protein pretty much. Being football, Baker University protein <laughs> Albany. So talk, talk about that as well to get involved with the community of Albany, Georgia, and then the surrounding areas here trying to get people really to stop with Georgia to really support this team and see you all and touch these people and get them to really be behind you guys. Well, well, the biggest thing is just coming out. And I think, you know, when we have prospect camps and team camps, you know, to really understand how important it is to get, you know, these young high school prospects in front of our eyes, because we don't just throw the balls out and say, hey, go, go, go play. Let's evaluate you. We're actually trying to mentor and, you know, educate the parents. I always have guest speakers speak at my camps. Um, I had uh, Miss Mildred Polite. She spoke to my parents about receiving funds at a state school. I had Dr. Pregis, one of our vice presidents. He was kind enough to speak to, you know, our parents just about all of any state. So the more you can support, you know, a campus by being, you know, on campus, going to their camps, going to their team camps, the more you can go to games, the more you can understand what the day-to-day, -day, you know, life is for a student athlete to educate, you know, not only yourself as a parent, but your, your son, you know, as a prospect, that's what supports us the most. You know, our president, you know, President Frederick believes that we have to have students on campus. And I agree with her 100%. The only way you're going to know about college basketball is about being around it, being around the coaches. And Coach White does an awesome job, you know, in camps, in, in skill development. And again, I always want to say this, personal development. We don't just talk to, you know, our prospects on that day. We still, you know, have a relationship. Recruiting them or not, you know, just trying to help them get better and be better. And then in the summertime, a lot of these, uh, you know, high school prospects that are from Southwest Georgia will come and we'll work out and play open gym. And, you know, we, we have a chance to mentor them. I don't care where you play. I just want you to be successful because at the end of the day, that's why the Lord has put me in this position. So I just want, you know, the community to understand that a lot of that individual mentoring is not done when everybody's around. It's done by access. We, we give ourselves access, you know, to these young people and helping them grow, you know, to be successful. And a lot of players that have been, you know, successful elsewhere will tell you that they've had conversations with us to help them, you know, reach that path. No doubt. And I'll just put it out there. Coach Gill mentors me mentors off the air, too. He mentors me off the air. JR, I pray for you every day. Every day. You know that. You know yes. that. <laughs> Coach Gale speaks to my better angels every day. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> but you do the same for me. You know, I learn from everybody. And the thing that I want people to understand is that as, as basketball coaches, especially, you know, at Albany State University, it's a community and it's a family. So you learn from your family members. Every and you learn from the younger generation. You learn from the older generation. So I've learned a lot from you. I can't thank you enough for your platform and what you've done for us and what you've done for the university just by having this. So you know we 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 have to be able to teach and reach each other. You know, not just say, "Oh, I'm praying for you," but what actions are you showing? If you if you're not doing something, then you know the, the prayers won't be answered and prayers won't be listened to. He has to see that we're working, too. So I appreciate you, JR, for what you're doing. And Coach Gill, we got two games this week for you guys, Mississippi College, West Alabama. Um, As you prepare for these games, let me ask you this, preparation-wise, do, do you kind of try to do a little bit of both schools? Or you kind of just do the one-day prep on the back end for West Alabama? So how does that go for those who don't quite know basketball the way you and I do? <laughs> so That's a great question. Um, You got to do both. You, you can't – you can't – you have to, you know, keep the main thing the main thing. We play Mississippi College Friday, but if we are ignorant to what West Alabama is doing for Sunday, then you're going to get exposed. So you got to do both. And, you know, we have to basically take a lot of data and information and put it into a usable, you know, platform, a usable product for the student athletes to retain so they cannot think on the court, just go play. Coach White's been, you know, busting his butt, 
you know, doing a great job in preparation for these two teams as they are for us. I mean, the way I look at it, the way you prepare for other teams, they're preparing the same way for you. So you got to make sure that you don't get exposed. That's what it's all about. No doubt. And, you know, finally, I know you guys are sick of each other. I know I'll be sitting the same color every day. <laughs> so, so how excited are your guys amped up? Not let them get too amped up, but see another another color finally on Friday night. They're extremely excited. They're extremely excited as they should be. Um, I I don't I don't think some of the freshmen know what they're about to get into, but that's why we have a lot of returning guys and we have some seniors. But they're extremely excited. Um, we, we had a real tough day of practice yesterday. Actually, we've coached White. We've had tough practices the last couple of weeks, I would say. You know, we, we, we're, we're getting them prepared for what it's going to be physically and we hope mentally. But, you know, that's the love of, of, of this time of year, man. Everybody's, you know, well, yesterday at this point, everybody was 0 0. Now, some teams have played last night, but everybody's excited about the season. And that's why you put in all that work. So we hope that um, we'll come out and, and we'll compete. And, and what we've been trying to tell them and show them, they have retained and they can show that they've been learning it. Well, I look for having a great recap on next Tuesday of <laughs> two dubs. <laughs> that's what I want. We, we, we play with that. We play with that, coach. Play with that, damn. You see, I, that's what I'm saying, man. Well, that's why I pray for you every day. I'm, I'm Now, let's hope that you're disciplined enough so that that can get to <laughs> the source. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, folks, this has been episode two of the Coach Patrick Gale Show here. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. And we'll talk to Coach Gale next Tuesday after hopefully we have two wins on the board of Albany State SAC basketball this year doing big things. Coach Gale, Coach White, thank you for your time today. It was fun as always. Appreciate you. Thank you.